Well, hello, folks, and welcome to this. And I know I always say it's going to be a short episode, but this time it is going to be a short episode because I am heading back into a bit of a building phase. And when the building phase starts to happen, the uh, production of videos starts to go down for a little while until I've got stuff that I think is worthy of showing you. And I love home brewing, and I hear a lot of people say that with the tech that we have presently and how complicated it is, you can't get results with homebrew that are going to give you equipment that's fun to operate and efficient to operate. And I would say that uh, if you are prepared to make the effort, this has never been a better time to homebrew. Now I have three transceiver kits <laughs> waiting to happen. And at the top of the pile, we have our 49er, and that is the cheap Chinese kit that's rock bound. And the plan is to take that rock bound kit and using this manual here, uh, make it frequency agile. So I'm very excited about that. It's going to be a fun little build. And I'm going to, when it's done, show you that completed transceiver. And this has been sitting on my desk forever. It's the OzQRP. MST transceiver. It's a single sideband transceiver that does CW and SSB. And I've just got it and a DDS VFO to that. And so that may be the second one that I build. It'll be the first 20 meter rig that I've built. And as OzQRP is no longer making gear, it'll be a lovely thing to get on the air because I'm imagining there won't be too many of them around anymore. And uh, this company, OzQRP, was I think the only one that was operating in the space for uh, QRP transceiver production. Let me know in the comment section below if you know of any other Aussie uh, people that are making kits, because I may have missed that. And I'd love to uh, highlight anyone that is uh, producing stuff. And of course, this is something that I discussed in a previous video. And this is, uh, God, what is it called? Mind like a sieve. This bundle of joy is the T41 EP Echo Papa Experimental SDR Transceiver. And Walt from Coastal Waves and Wires put me onto this kit. And it is being sold by, wait for it, it's being produced by Alpha India 6 Yankee Mike. And that gentleman has put together all the kits and all the parts and all that sort of stuff. So it's great that this thing is online. Now, anyone that's in Australia that's buying this rig, you can buy the rig in its entirety in one go. But the trouble with that is that once you hit that magic number of $1,000, uh, Customs jumps in and says, give me another 300 So this has cost me a lot more than it should have. And, and that is not uh, the fault of the vendor. Because obviously customs levies and customs regulations are different worldwide and it's down to you to actually make sure you know what you're doing. But I would be perhaps contacting the vendor and saying, can you maybe send it out in two deliveries and have it labelled as radio parts? Um, that might be a way of, and this is, I don't think, illegal because um, you are declaring what's in the box, radio parts. Uh, that may be a way of doing it. I'm not sure whether the vendor is prepared to split kits up and do it that way, but it would be maybe worth a try. I'm very, very excited about building this rig. It looks like it's going to be a heap of fun, and I will end up with a rig that I can be really, really proud of. And like I said, a very sophisticated SDR radio. So the, the sky is the limit when it comes to building and home brewing. Once again, uh, people that subscribe to the channel will know um, that I do build and refurbish gear and if you look at what's behind me here uh, the antenna box it switches antennas is homebrew uh, my keying arrangement for my Hermes light is homebrew uh, this linear amplifier for the Hermes light part kit ch cheap Chinese amplifier which blew up straight away put some of my own uh, field effect transistors in it and it's doing about 45 watts now and it's working really well I had it smashing out FD8 last night and there is last night's log Philippines Australia Indonesia and uh, three or four uh, stations in the United States all on uh, 40 meters it was a great night 
of course, a refurbished uh, FT-101E Yaisu and the refurbished TS-520, both of which I've been inside and had to change lots and lots of parts. And I will just swing the camera around and show you a few of the other things that are happening here as well. Sweep down to the uh, below the desk here. Under the desk there is a power supply that runs the entire shack, and that has two microwave transformers in it that were rewired for DC to give me high current. It's a linear power supply, and it's a Drew Diamond design, the Mises supply, built in an old PC case and the heat sink. It looks very steampunk. It's actually the heat sink of a, an amplifier for a car. So once again, home brew. Uh, lots and lots of kits been built. You've seen the uh, QRP Labs gear that I've got. And I'll just swing around and we'll have a look at the QRP playground. And this, folks, is the QRP playground. And for anyone that uh, thinks that um, home brewing is not really something that can happen in this day and age. This is my realistic DX160, 1970s technology, completely recapped, and I have used this to conduct QSOs. This is a rig switching box, very much like my Magic Antenna box, to allow me to switch between a number of rigs in the playground. And over here, we have a single tube transmitter based on the uh, 1960s Amico design, and I've used this to conduct QSOs as well. Now, it'll run on crystals, uh, the 243 type or the uh, normal uh, smaller type crystal, but uh, it also has this QRP Labs VFO that um, will power it as well with some additional circuitry of my own design to get it to produce the voltages necessary to actually um, provide enough signal for this, uh, for this tube. So lots and lots of exciting stuff is happening all of the time. And this, folks, is where the magic happens my QRP playground, and I guess it's a tribute to the fun that can be had when you commit to making some homebrew happen. And for regular viewers of the channel, my apologies for showing some stuff that you may have already seen, but uh, new viewers might benefit from just seeing how exciting building your own gear and how satisfying building your own gear can be, and even buying old gear and refurbishing it and visiting the past because I guess it'll depend on how old you are, but people of my vintage uh, look back to their youth uh, with a certain amount of nostalgia and think about rigs that they would have been salivating over when they were looking through the catalogs, thinking, oh, I'd love to have that, but I could never afford it. And a lot of those rigs I now own, admittedly, <laughs> 50 plus years old, uh, but uh, it's, it's been a very exciting journey for me. I guess as we get older, we like to play as well. So the DX160, I used to see that in the, uh, the Tandy catalogs and thought, wow, I'd love to have a receiver like that. Well, bought this one and uh, when it arrived, it had some issues, but uh, lots and lots of recapping and adjusting and everything else. And it now operates really, really nicely. And of course, viewers of this channel who have been subscribed from the very beginning will know that uh, this space we're in now, when it first started, there was no radio gear. No, we're going back in the studio. This is um, really great filming done after three and a half gin and tonics. And um, yeah, we're looking at the beam. That beam that runs across the roof was actually used to lift motors out because it was an old mechanics garage. Lots of family photos. And yeah, it's going to be a great place to paint. And I've started painting. There's a picture of a rooster's head. Three years ago, roughly. Uh, the space was completely empty. My first QSO was on Echolink, and uh, I'll link to that uh, video below. The uh, first QSO was uh, to a station in Thailand where I attempted to speak Thai and was basically understood, but uh, that was a lot of fun. And then the first HF QSO with my own equipment was, of course, this, the, uh, the Mooncake Transmitter. And it's a very, very basic transmitter. It started as a uh, 250 milliwatt transmitter. And then we upped the power and we got it up into uh, probably about two, two and a half watts. And uh, we did a couple of QSOs on that. The first QSO when it was in the milliwatts was at a station that was only 150 kilometers away. Once we got it up to two and a half watts, managed to work a station in Victoria, Helen, on, on CW. And we were listening 
on this, the direct conversion receiver. I was very, very proud of this. You know, building transmitters is hard enough, but building a receiver, that's where things get very, very tricky. And this was a hodgepodge of different designs. And uh, there's videos on the channel if you want to see the adventure that happened building this, but I even rewound some IF cans. So I got very, very, very involved in the construction of this. And uh, if you go back into the back catalogue of videos in the ham radio playlist on this channel, you'll see uh, this receiver in action. And it's surprisingly good. Direct conversion receivers are surprisingly good for the amount of simplicity that's involved. And of course, the QRP playground, there's a video on that. And what we ended up doing was we built this rig switching device. So we've got uh, an output here, down here, DC, and I've got a number of uh, cables made up that I can plug in here. I think it's up to 10 different uh, transmitters and trans receivers and whatnot. And uh, this is the VFO for my Amico knockoff, a one tuba, the AOE one tuba with a 6V6 tube in it. And it does, uh, with the crystals in it, about uh, five or six watts. And uh, using the VFO, because the drive is a little bit lower, we still get a comfortable two and a half, three watts out of it. So very happy with this rig. And we have QSO'd on this rig as well. Pure satisfaction. That's all I can say about homebrew. Obviously, pure satisfaction mingled with pure frustration at many times. <laughs> and anyone that homebrews will know all about that. So see, I was not lying. That is it for this episode. And I'll be heading off to JCAR tomorrow to buy those parts. And I'll probably be spending the next few nights trying to uh, finish off that transceiver. And when I've got uh, something that uh, resembles a working transceiver, if, even if it's not in the box, I shall share it with you. I'm like an expected parent when I start building a rig. I just get very obsessed with the whole situation. Um, it is a lot of fun. 73, and I shall see you when I next reappear on the art of engineering, hopefully with a working transceiver.